Hello, my name is Paul Yontop. I'm currently a PhD student of physics at PUCP, and today I'm going to present the trebium doping and luminescent activation effects on the optical and luminescent properties of aluminum thin oxide thin films. In this talk, I will focus on the luminescent properties of this material. Aluminum thin oxide is a degenerate semiconductor with a wide band gap. And due to this degeneracy, it shows a good conductivity while retaining an optical transparency, its optical transparency. And it is also suggested as an alternative to ITO for different applications. What we wanted to do was to make, to make it multifunctional by adding a new property, which is luminescence. Uh, it could be used in potential applications such as solar cells. For example, in this typical crystalline silicon solar cell, uh, there is a, an energy downshifting or down conversion layer at, at the top to take advantage of this ultraviolet range of the solar spectrum. And our material could be used at the, as that layer. So it also could be used in emitting devices and also in gas sensors. The samples were prepared by radio frequency magnetron sputtering. This is an schematic of the, the system used with this deposition parameters. The substrate holder was rotating at, at this uh, frequency uh, to obtain a good homogeneity between the samples. The, cooled, the, sum, the substrate holder was actively cooled do, during the deposition. And I would like to emphasize this based on previous work on our lab uh, with rarer doped wide band gap semiconductors. Um, we cool down the sample to induce a rearrangement of the of the terbium ion in this case and its surroundings to activate them by means of thermal treatments, thermal annealing treatments. So these treatments, these thermal treatments were done in air atmosphere and in this temperature range. Uh, both the as deposited and annealed samples showed good transparency. A similar approach was taken also for uh, samples uh, of terbium doped ITO. You can see it. Uh, you can see the results on on this presentation also in this conference. Okay, so here the figure on the left shows the normalized cathode luminescence intensity uh, versus the wavelength. Here is uh, the spectrum for each annealing temperature, okay, for this uh, sample with this serbium concentration. And as you can see, uh, we obtained the characteristic emission uh, for terbium. Okay. And to further analyze this, we uh, took the spectrum area into three parts. So first the background emission, which covers the spectral range, the whole spectral range, the terbium related emission which covers the peaks, just the peaks, and the excitonic emission which is centered at 380 nanometers. And at 300 degrees uh, of annealing temperature we can see that it start, the terbium related emission starts to increase until 500 degrees. So, uh, we believe in this range there is uh, occurring an optical activation due to these thermal treatments. So, there is an improvement of the terbium related emission. And if we increase the temperature up to 1000 degrees, it, uh, the terbium related emission goes down to zero while the uh, excitonic emission strongly increases and is equal as, almost as equal as the background emission. So high temperature may improve the crystallinity, uh, but may worsen the, the symmetry of the crystal field surrounding the terbium ions that is required to activate uh, for, for the emission. So the consequence of this is the squenching. With this result, we believe that the transfer, the energy transfer mechanism between the terbium ions and the host, the AC dough, is of excitonic nature. So, in order to assess this possible energy transfer mechanism, we took the 400 degree sample to uh, perform temperature dependent photoluminescence experiments. 
Here we can see the normalized photoluminescence uh, spectrum uh, related to terbium to the terbium emission for each sample temperature. So we took the logarithm of the integrated area, okay, and we, we plotted it against the reciprocal of the temperature, as you can see here in this in this uh, figure. And we can notice that there are two regions where a quenching occurs. There's a decrease of the intensity. So both regions were fitted with an Arrhenius-like expression, like this one, and the lower temperature region was fitted with two energies and the higher temperature with one activation energy. We interpret these activation energies as binding energies of excitons that are bound to terbium clusters. And we believe these excitons uh, that are bound to these terbium clusters recombine and their combination energy is transferred to the uh, cluster, inducing a photon emission from the terbium ions. So as we increase the temperature, there is a thermal dissociation of these excitons that induce this quenching. So we use two models for this uh, kind of uh, cluster traps, rare earth isovalent traps, and we use two models, the coaster later model and the spherical potential well model. In the coaster later model we have two parameters to be calculated, the impurity potential and the host effective valence bandwidth. Um, and these are the expressions to calculate the binding energies. In the case of the spherical potential well model, there is a potential depth, which is uh, the same regardless of the number of ions inside the cluster, and the effective radius. So with this, we can calculate the binding energies corresponding to this model. These are the calculated parameters for this model. And although the, they are um, not in well agreement with uh, the values that we could obtain from the literature, uh, we could calculate the, the corresponding energies for the cluster with three, four, and five ions. And we obtain that as we increase the number of ions in the cluster, the, the binding energy increases. Okay, so the third energy, the third experimentally obtained energy was around 800 mL electron volts, which could be related to a cluster with eight ions. And we believe that for this terbium concentration, there is a very low probability for, for that cluster to form. So this energy, this high energy, binding energy, could be related, or activation energy, could be related to a different uh, quenching process. Okay, anyway, so we took uh, a sample with a slightly higher terbium concentration and we also did the temperature dependent um, PL experiment and we found this curve. So we used four activation energies um, to, to fit uh, the data and with the two lowest um, binding energies activation energies calculated the parameters for both models and these results are in a well agreement with the with the values that we found in the literature so with these uh, parameters calculated we further calculated also the corresponding um, binding energies for the cluster with three four and five ions as you can see those in green are the experimentally obtained binding energies and um, those in blue and red are from the coaster slater and the spherical potential well model. Those with um, three and four ions in the cluster, we can see that the experimentally obtained values are in well agreement with the calculated ones with the model. Okay, to summarize, this um, this talk, we have seen that we obtained the terbium related emission, the characteristic terbium related emission, and uh, for a temperature that at around 300 degrees Celsius uh, in thermal thermal treatment of thermal treatment, uh, there is starts an increase 
of the terbium related emission. So we believe that there is an optical activation of of these ions, so their intensity is increasing. And we took a sample with a slightly higher terbium concentration and we found by means of a temperature dependent PL experiments that there could be four activation energies and we relate these activation energies as binding energies of excitons that could be bound that are bound to the uh, uh, terbium clusters. So we took uh, two models for, for this uh, interpretation and found the corresponding binding energies and we found that for the cluster with three and four ions the experimentally obtained um, binding energies and those calculated binding energies with both models are in well agreement. So uh, also you can see here in this talk the trivium doped ITO results which show a similar approach as, as, as the one presented here and also uh, the ITO um, results on the optical of electronic properties obtained by ellipsometry and I will finally w like to um, thank the institutions that funded this work and also thank you for watching this this presentation